Tampa Home Talk and this is our number two. Thanks for joining us. We are glad you are here and we got another exciting show lined up that we know is going to be right on time for those of you listening still in the car hanging around going wherever you're going. Thanks for tuning in and also join for hour two. I'm Leo King with Barrel Engineering and Inspection and uh, Hurricane Claim Experts. AKA <laughs> Trivia Buff. <laughs> Trivia Buff. And Adam Talley with Talley Insurance. And we're also going to introduce our guest for the show, and today's topic is going to be all about how to maintain your air conditioning to get maximum life. Uh, some of those FAQs that people like me and maybe the person listening has no idea, and we're just going to have some fun all around with how to keep you cool during these super, super hot months. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome Mario's Air Conditioning and Heating and uh, Mr. Dennis Martin. Yes. And that's you. You are the safety director, right? I am, and I'm also in the uh, new home construction part of uh, Mario's. So fun. We're going to talk about what you do and a little bit more about that as we move along here. And then we also have Cody Wiggins, service manager. Oh, he's not here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you did not tell me, Cody. No, nope, Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> you placed him out on me and didn't tell me. So introduce yourself for me, will you? Uh, well, I'm Thomas uh, Hager, uh, the install manager for Mario's Air Conditioning. Uh, take care of all the residential replacements, all that kind of stuff. Thomas, thank you for joining us. We're yes, glad sir. you guys are here. Um, so uh, without with the, before we jump into AC, we didn't do an insurance tip of the week. You want to do that, Adam? Yeah. Especially with number nine. Number being nine above. hanging out there. Nothing we did you. get our citizens binding restriction last night um but it's always a good time to remind people that even if you are not in a mandatory flood zone you could certainly have a flood claim and that's not covered by homeowners insurance and there's a 30-day waiting period so if i want flood insurance i can't even get it right if now If you wanted flood insurance today i could certainly sell it to you but your effective date would be october 13th not why did they do that we never did answer that the reason they do is is Exactly for situations like today. So if uh, you got that storm out there, they want to protect themselves from people getting insurance just for that, you know, just so for that So why storm. wouldn't they let you get insurance and just not cancel? <laughs> I guess they can't, right? They just can't. Yeah, and honestly, you, with the NFIP, you can, you, there's only certain reasons why you can cancel. So you couldn't even... What? What do you mean? I didn't even know that. Yeah. Did you oh. know that? Mm-hmm. Okay, tell me more. <laughs> well, I mean, so for instance, like you can only cancel if you say you sell the home or... If you do have duplicate coverage, however, they're going to want you to probably cancel the other so one. You so you have to wait until the basically it expires mm -hmm. and then you can say, I'm not renewing. Yep. Wow. I didn't know that. Absolutely. So if you do have flood questions or anything else like that, text FLOOD to 813-377-2775. I would love to answer all your questions. Now's a make great sure time to be asking them too. It, it most certainly is. So I... Uh, going to miss the rest of the show. I'm very sad about that, but I think it's going to be a great one. I'm going to listen to it on the ride. Thank you. We office. appreciate it. And we're glad you're here. It's funny how we can actually run out of mics. I don't know how that happens, <laughs> <laughs> but we do. All right. So let's, we're going to have a little bit of fun with this situation here and um, just talk a little bit about what to expect. So um, when you think about properly maintaining your AC and making it more energy efficient, um, what are your thoughts on that? Where who's who's the best person to actually answer this question? I'll probably take suit on this one. Uh, so basically, as a homeowner, what you want to do is um, in in Florida, an average air conditioner runs anywhere between about twenty eight hundred to about thirty two hundred hours in a year. So it's recommended to have uh, maintenance done twice a year. You want to do the AC side where we come out, we can clean the coils, do all that kind of stuff, check electrical, refrigerant, all that stuff, make sure you're getting the most energy efficiency out of your unit, and then do the heating side so we don't have any problems, you know, fires, anything like that on the back side when you go to fire up the heating in the winter. You know, when you get that weird kind of smell that comes out the oh, fans. Yeah. yeah, everybody gets that, that burning oil smell, and they're like, eh, what's this? That's fire bad. Thing. That means I can have a fire. No, it's just residual, like, bacterial growth that's built up on the heat strip. So stuff like I that. I think everybody's heat smells like that if you turn it on, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? For that first little bit, yeah, most definitely. So um, so tell me a little bit about Mario's air conditioning and heating. How long have they been around? Uh, right now, Dennis, that's going to be your point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mario's uh, started in 2004. 
Uh, he, he had worked for other companies prior to that, but uh, we have been up in that area about 2004. What area do you serve? We actually go all the way over into Polk County, up into Marion County, down into, uh, you know, uh, Sarasota, Bradenton area. So you uh, serve Sarasota to? Ocala right now. Okay. And then over as far east as uh, Polk County. Wow, that's a really big area. It that's is. a big cover area. Okay. And um, so how many people do you guys have working with your company? So there's, right now we're at uh, just over 60 people. Uh, we're looking to expand a little bit bigger than that uh, with, with some things that are coming up in the near future. Over 80 years of combined industry knowledge. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. And what is, I'm seeing on here, you're also NATE certified. What does NATE, N-A-T-E mean? Uh, NATE is North American Trade, uh, and I can't remember the part, the last, the E cer certification. Expert, I'm actually maybe? Expert, excellence. I think it's okay, something, something of like that. that. Yeah, okay. something like that. But you it's basically. Know that. What does NATE stand for? It's basically a test that uh, each technician is supposed to take over, you know, say a, a five-year course um, that shows that that technician is trained in their specific field, whether it be installing an air conditioner, um, repairing an air conditioner, or just general knowledge of air conditioning all the way through. And each one of our technicians are certified that. Um, if not, we have them on a training resume where they can get up to the par and learn that stuff and get under the NATE certified side. So what does the 34 point inspection actually mean? Like, what is that exactly? So what 34 it, points are you checking? It literally, I and mean, that's kind of everything they go through on the system. So they will go through refrigerant point. They will check all electrical components in the outside unit. Um, they will clean out any leaves, debris in the outside unit, flush out your drain line, um, make sure that we don't have any flooding going on inside the house. Um, then they work inside on the inside unit and then they check out your duct work. They inspect everything up in the attic. Um, they will also check for amp draws, making sure we're not too high on electric consumption, the whole nine yards. And it's literally a 34 point list through it. So what's that look for? I know you get questions. No, no. North American technical excellence. Perfect. Okay. There you go. So we, we moved too fast. No, I just, I, you asked me a question yeah. and immediately went into a great uh, rendition of how, what the benefit is, but uh, I never got to answer. <laughs> thank you for that. Well, thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> go ahead. I know you got another question. No, I just, it, it just, uh, it always surprised me during, we do a lot of residential home inspections and how many times when we're go inspecting a house and we ask how many times you change your air filter and they tell us, I'm supposed to change my air filter. Oh, no. Yeah, or the worst case scenario is I feel bad for the landlords when, so where's your air handler? They're in the clo It's in the closet. Which closet? And it's usually the one with the dressers in front of it. Covering, because, right. yeah. Because yeah. you can't use that closet, so people just put furniture in front of it because it's wasted space. Yep. Out of sight, out of mind. Some people have a bad tendency uh, forgetting all that, forgetting all, forgetting all this or whatever. Yeah, I'm whatever trying, that is. Whatever that word I'm trying to make up there. So basically, it's okay. You can make up words as you go. Yeah, mind. that's how it works. Um, so anyways, when you got a filter inside the house, obviously you want to check that filter every 60, 30 to 60 days. Check the filter, inspect it. If it, if it looks 30, then probably time to go ahead and change that out um that what if it's sucked into the unit then obviously you got something else going <laughs> on and, and that's when you would call mario's air conditioning and we can come out and come take a look at that and find out what's going on there i, I know leo yourself as well as our guests are a great person to answer this but let's talk about because that can happen so much and we were just talking the last hour what, about getting sucked up? no 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 um, <laughs> give me a second we were just talking about buying investment properties right and building wealth through that and part of the challenge when you have a tenant property as opposed to an owner occupied property is the way it's kept and maintained right not all tenants are bad but generally speaking tenants are not going to maintain your home the way that you would so with that being said in that scenario we just talked about where someone's never changed the ac filter in a year right of a lease then they've never changed it fire your property manager i get around that with my rental properties i have it in my property management agreement that they'll go to the property once a month and change the filter and i totally agree with that 100 percent. we put it in ours as well and i agree and i think it should be that way as well but i'm talking about for the person listening that doesn't have that so the person listening you need to talk to your property management company and tell them that they need to go in the property once a month inspect it visually inspect it visually make and sure change there's the no air dogs, filter. not on the lease basically they're going to use the premise of i'm changing your air filter to make sure they're not growing meth they're not running guns i had a inspection earlier this week the house burned down because he they made a meth lab in their in their master bedroom property manager hadn't stepped foot in the property in two years they were cooking meth in tampa breaking bad style Two years, property manager never stepped foot in the property. Man, that's too bad Adam's not here. Adam, if you're listening, you need to call in and talk about from an insurance side. I want to know, how does that work? Because if you're cooking meth in the house, like there's a, it's really hard. To, you and it was a fire. Down. So, I mean, to rebuild the house, they're rebuilding the house. Ooh. 
Interesting. All right. So the question is, and we'll have to answer it when we come back right after the break, but if you have that AC filter, hasn't been changed for a year, you know it's going to be dirty. Uh, what's the impact on your system long term? You just spray it with a hose and throw it back in. Yeah, I know we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth when we come back after the break. Our all pair number is 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. You can call or text us at 813-377-2775. You got a question? Text away. We'll answer it on the air. We'll be back right after this break. This is Tampa Home Talk. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane with Tampa Home Talk and Katrina Madewell. And before Katrina can steal my thunder, I've got a great AC question to ask. I've got this apartment building, complex. It's got Chinese drywall. I keep having to change my AC system. Why? Uh, well, that'll actually have to do with the coils. Sometimes I don't think people actually even know that they have Chinese drywall, right? That could be a possible. Well, if you have to change your AC system at once every three years, you probably have Chinese drywall. There you go. There's something to look for. The cause and effect of that, um, I've ran across this situation a couple times. Um, what actually happens is the Chinese drywall will actually eat up the copper or the aluminum for the coils for the system. So it actually destroys the refrigerant system for these units. Um, and that's about right every two to three years? They if, it's, if it's in the home, the only thing that I've seen as a fix on that is actually just getting rid of the drywall in the house and then redry roll in the whole house or you're just gonna have to deal with maybe you might want to look into getting the coils dipped um, there are some manufacturers Lennox is one of them that we use that can actually get the coils dipped and pre-coated before they go into the home that might give them a little bit more time on it so might be something they want to look into on that if side. I had a home with Chinese drywall would not want to live in that home well, with I don't Chinese have that it was a theoretical scenario <laughs> makes sense yeah. for sure all right going back to the other question I had if you got this property or like Leo's scenario I guess after two years the property manager hasn't seen it and it's burned down because there's a meth lab it doesn't matter <laughs> but if uh, it's been a year right and no one's changed the filter there's furniture blocking the intake. Is that the right word? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, the, the, yep. the door with the little grill, so the air, yeah, the yeah, return. So the air is yeah. supposed to so flow So it actually freely. cools down your house. You know, you block that up, but it's okay. It still works. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, the cause and effect of that is um, it's kind of like a dirty sock. So if you put a sock inside your lungs and you try to breathe, right? If that sock starts to get really, really dirty, your lungs are just going to fail on you. And internal organs are going to start to fail, all that kind of stuff. Same thing happens for my air conditioner, right? If I get a dirty filter, it can't breathe. So then we're we're going to ask for um, increased pressures on my coils, which is going to cause mechanical damages, which is going to slow, hinder your efficiency. And then also the breathing aspect of it. You're going to have bacterial growth can form inside the units, um, which then can go into your duct system, which then can ruin a duct system and, and avoid, you know, having to have duct cleaning. So changing your filter is probably the one most important thing that I could recommend to anybody. Um, kind of touching back on the basis of when to do it. A customer at one time had an excellent idea. Every time you get your electric bill, check your filter that's the easiest reminder so when you get electric bill, i think check the problem filter. is everything's on such auto pay right now and right you, uh, like people are sight, on autopilot yeah. yeah so yeah. the first of the month right the first you, of the month when yeah. you pay your mortgage payment you notice that <laughs> one's moving <laughs> that one's definitely so i have an check it out. ac question if this is more science related so yeah. cold air falls hot air rises correct so i understand why i would put my air supplies up in the ceiling cold mm -hmm. air falls but why are my returns on usually at the floor level? Typically, I would ask if, if it is a floor level return, we try to relocate those up to the ceiling because there again, that's the same principle. You want to get the hot air out of there, cycle through the equipment so we can remove that hot air inside the house and get it back down to the temperature you desire. And you saw, well, you're in the new home space, right, mm -hmm. Dennis? So you can probably comment on the designs you're seeing in new home construction. That's just what Thomas has been saying. That, you know, we're always looking for more efficient ways to do things, not necessarily less expensive, but more efficient because over the, the, the life of the, uh, the home, when you put the equipment in and you locate the things in the proper manner, uh, it's going to save the homeowner money in the long run. Does it matter what kind of filter you use in your system? Well, that, that, that can vary there. I mean, you can go, if you go into like a Home Depot or Lowe's, you can go from, you know, your cheap super that you can see straight through the filter all the way to the ones that look like a piece of plywood um, that doesn't look like much airflow goes through it. Um, you got to be very careful in what you kind of pick for your home based upon your system. You need to know what kind of system you have inside your house. If you have a variable speed inside fan motor or if you have a set speed fan motor, those make differences on, on regulating your efficiency. What does that mean and how would you know? I have well, no 
idea. Like what you're saying right now, I'm thinking about my air at home. I have no clue. So there's a, a MERV rating scale out there, which is basically it picks up the particle matters um, that fly through the air and stick to the filter. So the higher the MERV rating, the more particle matters it's going to catch. Um, We're actually getting some comments on our, our Facebook stream. Would you mind if I talk about that? Yeah, let's go Because it's super relevant. So he's talking about the return being actually low. Okay. How he's had issues with it, and he's had to put vinegar or bleach every so often. Correct. Uh, that he's probably talking, referring to the drain line there. Um, that would mean that he's having a lot of bacterial f growth buildup in there. Maybe it's in a location. Maybe there's pets inside the home. Um, something of that nature. Loose duct work that's allowing that bacterial growth to form more, more predominant inside that system. What do pets in the home have to do with it? Well, pets are, I mean, they shed. They lose hair. That sticks to your filter, which there again, you're asking for bacterial growth. Even if your filter is high in the air where your return is? Oh, yeah, they're definitely. You should ask my husky at the house. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Uh, I have one yeah, of those. Yeah. Too, they're oh, yeah. terrible. Humans <clears throat> lose hair and skin as well. I just want to say that in defense of the cats right. and dogs. Not me. <laughs> you do. Yeah, pet dander. Clumps, it dander. clumps together on the filter, and that's that's the whole point. The, the better the filter is, it's going to catch those dust particles, those air, animal hair, all that stuff, and it's going to clump together on those filters. If I can just add to that real quick, the easy way to remember that is lower the lower the lower the number, the bigger the holes. The higher the number, the smaller the holes. What do you mean? What number? On what? The, Mer the MERV rating. The MERV rating is how you scale how good your filter is. Where do you see the up. MERV rating? I have no idea what you're talking about again. Most Typically, most of your filters will actually have it labeled on the system itself, on the filter itself. So It'll it says actually say MERV? MERV. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Okay. And the, what are those numbers? Those numbers are just, the, it, it's a, a government rated test that actually, they determine based upon this filter, it's going to pick up this much dust mites. Is it one to through. 10 or what's the numbers? Um, they go as low as anywhere between six to seven I've seen as low and they go as high up as like 16. So, so we how have, do you know which one to pick? Uh, there again, it depends on where, where your system is located. So <laughs> you, your, your technician, your AC company that's out there that's doing your regular maintenance should give you a recommendation based upon where you're at. Um, if it's a, a, a an idealistic world and you have the space and you could do everything, I would recommend maybe using like a Merv 16, which is a big fat media filtration. It's a fat filter, and that filter only has to be changed once every six to eight months. It also so I think I have both here. Like if you look up in the office, I got those little ones in the ceiling, mm -hmm. but I have two AC units in the back with huge little not little huge filters mm -hmm. and that's what you're talking about right correct and, and you want to try and avoid you only want to have one filter for right. the system you if, if it's one point of access that's where the one filter is now if you have multiple returns through the house then you need to have multiple filters throughout the house so each scenario is going to vary depending upon each situation depends on which home you're walking so if to. you've got a low return and it's not in the ceiling and mm -hmm. you're having some of these issues right with high humidity kind of shutting the system down and back and stuff up correct um which one should you use i would stay anything above a, a, a merv 10 or higher at that customer point um you want to stay more of like a pleated style filter um just try to stay away from these hogs hair or the 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 blue if you can if the best test that you can do for a filter is if you hold the filter up and you take a, a like salt container pour it over top of the filter if it the salt goes straight through how much do you think it's picking up on those dust particles going through actually is the air conditioner working so the same thing goes with the media f the the pleated filters if you put the salt there it's going to catch that salt before so it you goes probably through. can't do that in your local hardware store no obviously <laughs> don't do that in home depot's <laughs> aisle please but it would be it would be definitely a great <laughs> test for the next time correct yes and you can still use it after you pour salt on yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there you go, Michael. Use a 10 with a, a pleated filter, at least a 10 MERV rating. And then uh, at what point do you recommend relocating that return? Does that happen? Uh, that typically you, uh, most homeowners try to do that when they're replacing the air conditioner. So that's to, because obviously sometimes uh, once the unit's ripped out, then it's a little easier to do that. There are some cases where we can do it beforehand. It just depends on how dirty that customer's filter gets and how regularly that if it needs to be relocated for them. Now, um, Oh, gosh. What was I going to say? I forgot. You left me again. You don't have nothing, Leo? Stop texting. <laughs> He's totally texting. I'm not texting. I'm emailing. Okay, emailing. <laughs> There's Sorry. a difference between the two. I'm just excited. We're learning about the MERV. We learned about, uh, what was this, Nate. We're learning about acronyms. These are all trivia pieces. Yes, they are, yeah. and you'll probably use them at some point. So do you guys work with a lot of property managers or homeowner associations? It, it's or things ki of it's kind of hit or miss on that. I mean, it obviously willing if it's a business, when we can move forward with that kind of stuff. Um, but at the current moment, I don't think we have a, 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 a lot of that. Um, I th gosh, it was something – oh, the handler. 
if the air handler mm -hmm. is in the attic, does that matter? What's the difference? That's what I was going to so ask. So this is, I'll give a good example for this. If if the air handler is up in the attic and air condition, uh, unless it's an ice and ceiling, uh, most attics get up to around 120, 130 degrees. Mm -hmm. So versus putting an air conditioner in a space that's, you know, 80, 90 degrees, which one do you think would, as you as a worker, would work better for you long term? Overall, the air conditioner likes to be, it can work up in the attic, but idealistic, it needs to be down in, in a conditioned space or somewhere, you know, where it's not getting beat so up. So you're saying the life of my AC is less because it's in the heat? Unfortunately, it will shorten the lifespan on an air conditioner. Definitely. Units that's up in the the I did put it in solar attic bands. <laughs> but that'll help. That'll that'll help. I mean, you have to think about it. You've got, if you think about generators or other large air handler units for commercial properties, if they put them in garage type buildings, they put louvers for airflow all over to keep the units as cool as possible. So yeah. We don't have space in Florida, so putting them up in the attic makes sense. Well, but if you look at the floor plan, like the design of my house, there's no place to put it. Much, much better. Also, you can you. It's better to maintain it. I, you're easier to catch the drip pan. Usually, they're rusted through before you notice them up in the attic. But or you, you don't have a ceiling that falls through because yeah. a drain pan. Yeah, if a drain line gets clogged. I have a clogged. little thing in the garage, so it would leak down there first. Okay, so uh, emergency, probably emergency drain line. If yeah. that one's working, that one's, then it shouldn't be doing that. Well, the cool <laughs> thing is I've got a, a smart thermostat, so it usually yes, tells me if anything's going on. Correct. And most of your systems are built in, if they are up in the attic, they do have safety switches that are built into them for the drain line. So if they back up, it's supposed to shut the unit off. Um, and then in some cases, uh, most cases, you're going to have an emergency pan below, so it's going to have two forms mm -hmm. to catch that. All right, you're so. listening to Tampa Home Talk. Stick around. We'll be back. We have to take a really quick break. Well, good morning. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane on Tampa Home Talk with the science of air conditioners for our hour with Mario's air conditioning and heating. Let's not forget about Mr. Pat George back there at the studio. Who's drinking? Working to be back here by myself all alone. No breakfast, no nothing. <laughs> I know. And it was your birthday, too. I, I actually thought about coming to the studio today. He was spoiled Because it was your show. birthday sure yesterday. You did. Sure you did. I have a present for you. I bought it when we were both in New York. Okay. Well, you know where to find me today. I know where to find you for sure. Okay, I have a question about AC units. I was talking to a guy out at the home show, and I, uh, I have an American Standard air conditioning system that has been with me now for 20-plus years. I haven't had a problem with it at all. And uh, he told me that should be something like maybe a, a, an 8-seer, and he said if I buy a new one now, it would be a higher-seer air conditioner, and I would save money. And I said, so good. Maybe if it breaks, I should do that. He said, no, you should just shut it down right now and buy one because you're going to, in the long uh, run, save money. Let me, I'm going to give you my opinion, Pat, and then we'll let the experts give you their opinion. <laughs> I want your opinion. I want the experts. Well, I just have to tell you because I proactively changed my own air conditioning unit. I had a tank. It was a York, a York okay. system, mm -hmm. which is more commercial, isn't it? But it was like a beast. It was a tank. It was original to the house. Is and I like thought... a chocolate peppermint patty? It, it was huge. <laughs> just a big tank, a big beast looking box and i'm like let me just be proactive and change this out so i'm not like without air on a two-week waiting list to get a new ac unit and i've had more issues with my new unit than i did with my beast old unit that always ran just saying yeah. now the experts can answer <laughs> all right so an answer to your question over there paul um so if it, it, my my thing is if it if it isn't broke don't fix it. Um, See, he however, told you what I however, I will say this: um, if you have a technician that comes out and does a proper maintenance on that, and they see the amp draw consumptions up very high on it, um, and your electric bills up high, if your electric bill is two, three, four hundred dollars plus then it might be time to go ahead and replace that unit and go ahead and upgrade to a higher SEER rating. And yes, he is correct. The SEER rating, just like the MERV rating that we were talking about with the filters, um, the higher the SEER number, the better the efficiency on the system. Um, SEER rating is seasonal energy efficiency rating. Um, basically, it just tells you how much it's going to cost you on your electric bill to run that unit. Same thing as like a water heater or a refrigerator. So um, it it may be time to start. You need to have yourself prepared because an average life expectancy in an air conditioner in Florida is around 10 to 15 years, um, depending upon how you maintain it. If you, you just said yours is 30 years, Pat? No, it's a little over 20 years. That's I haven't 20. had a problem whatsoever. But I, I, I'll tell you one thing. I moved that air handler out of the attic, put it in the garage. It made a world of difference. Uh, there there we does. go. Exactly what we were just talking how, about. How feasible <laughs> is it to move it when it's already in the... 
Relocation okay. products that relocation projects take about a day um, between the electrical that needs to be moved, the refrigerant lines, and moving the ductwork down into the garage. But so why wouldn't or, someone talk about that when I had my AC replaced? Or there's an or there. If your air handler is actually above your garage, like it is, you it can, is. So if it's above the garage, instead of moving the air handler, just build up the drywall around it and make it part of the garage. Yeah, that would have made sense. Yeah. Bring it out of that. Bring it out of that 120, 130 degree attic. I, yeah, I can see that point. That'll bring a longer lifespan. Obviously, case well, in point. Well, there's trusses there, but and there's a truss under it. If it if it's not right possible, you, you easily easily encase it and dry. I've seen it all the time. Yeah, they'll actually they'll actually do a cutout almost yeah. type build up around it so that that it's down in the garage space yep. instead oh, of I've in the attic. Oh, I've seen those. As soon as you said yeah. it, I'm like, yeah, I, I know um, what you're talking but about. But new home builders do not put that in the attic anymore. Is that correct? Dennis? That's, <laughs> that, that's not always true. It depends on the builder, the design of the house. Um, For the mo- I would say it's a smaller percentage. It right? is a smaller Much percentage, smaller percentage. Now. Absolutely. It actually depends because there's a lot of times where I'm in a two-story house and then I, there's like this little cut chase on the second floor to get into the attic system and the home. air handlers are there. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. What's, can we ask Michael's question that he had? Oh, about hybrid water heaters? Yeah. Would you remember what the question was? Uh, he's or saving to 40 to $50 here? a month using a hybrid water heater. So what? Let's, let's start with what is a hybrid water heater? Uh, by nature, I mean, uh, from previous experience with water heater, it's it's basically like having a water heater but having an air conditioner on top. So it does the same principle as what an air conditioner does, but it uses the heating side of it where you dissipate the heat to actually heat up the hot water. So the air conditioning, the cooling, excess cooling that's left over gets blown into your garage. So if your air conditioner is in your garage, it's going to keep it like, you know, 70, 80 degrees in that range, 90 degrees. Is that a whole new system or can you... That's a whole new water heater. And it's huge. So some of the science behind that is energy is nothing more than heat. So when your units use energy, you feel them and they're, they're getting warm. Because uh, heat is created, it's the it's the it's the output of excess or wasted energy. Mm-hmm. So what this water heater is doing is taking that output of the wasted energy and putting it into the water, and the water is collecting it and heating up. How does it create air in the garage? Well, the top it's an air conditioner on the top, and oh. it's blowing cool air, and it's mm-hmm. waste heat is used in the water. So same principle with an air conditioner. An air conditioner, by nature, if you go out to your outside unit when it's in AC mode, um, and you put your hand over top of the fan that's spinning, right? Mm-hmm. It'll be hot air that'll be blowing out of there. Mm-hmm. And if you go inside at the vents, it'll be cold air blowing out the vents. Well, if you do it in the wintertime, it's actually reverse. So it'll be cold air coming mm-hmm. out the vent outside, and it'll be hot air coming out inside. So same thing happens with the, the water heater. You're using the heat to heat up the water, and you're using the AC is just excess. They're just trying to get rid of it just happens to be in your garage. Yeah. So, so during that one week of winter we get in December or February, you should tr- you should test it out what he was saying about the difference between the cool air being pushed and stuff. Yeah, yeah. no, I've definitely felt I've definitely felt that before. I know what you're talking about. They're predicting an entire week this year. <laughs> no, the they, there is a week in December <laughs> and there is a week in February we get a portion of that week is winter. I, I hardly ever really turn on my heat to be totally honest. Like it, it really almost never happens. It has to be really really cold. And we turn it on to literally take the nip out of the house, and then it probably goes off. Because I'm always hot. So never put the heat I'm on. in a 100-year-old house, so whatever the outside temperature is, the inside temperature is. <laughs> you might as well just not have any units at all. Just uh, open your windows. Yeah, couple that with wood floors. Those That, that one week of winter is freezing. Uh-huh. So um, as a homeowner, what are some preventative maintenance that people should be doing to maintain their system? And, and I guess a piggyback question on that would be, um, how often should the system be maintained? Well, l- let's go with the last question. So maintaining the system um, every six months is what I recommend. Um, obviously, best time to do it is, you know, March, April, May, right before AC season starts. Um, and then you want to do your, your heating side, um, say, October, November, December. And not that we have, you know, a much, but it's still nice to have the heating side to make sure everything's functional on that side. I'm on an um, April-October system myself, so. Now, what, what happens awesome. when you maintain maintain it what do you do when you come out every six months like what are you doing what are you looking for what are you well we're just obviously looking for anything standout stuff you know a high electric consumption um if we see a part that's starting to fade out we try to give you a recommendation to replace that part before it fails because nobody wants to be inconvenienced i don't want to have to go out at you know 11 o'clock at night or on fourth of july weekend um because a, a, a fan motor goes bad well we could have replaced one little part and it would have taken care of that so it's all preventative stuff um as far as a homeowner what they can do stay on top of changing the filter out 
um, try to flush out their drain lines. If they have a drain line, um, my big thing is just using warm water. Um, some people like to use bleach, some people like to use vinegar, but if you just use some nice hot water, a, a, a few cups of that through the drain line will flush out majority I, I of it. I thought the out vinegar there. and the bleach kind of got all the bacteria, huh? It does and it doesn't, but you, you have to be careful because of the PVC with the PVC glue and it sits in that trap. So you don't want that bleach or that vinegar to, to sit in the trap of the unit. So. You have the chemical engineering degree. You're a good person to comment on this, Leo. Well, if you if you you put the vinegar or the bleach in there and it sits, then yeah, it's going to eat the it's going to eat the glue. It okay. won't eat the PVC, it'll eat the glue. That's why a lot of times I see them put the stuff in, they use a wet vac to make sure it. they Correct. flush it through. The, the absolute uh, top thing that a homeowner can do, two things, is, is, is work on that drain line on a, on a consistent basis and the filters. And then, you know, do get the maintenance done every year, and, and they'll be shocked. So they'll when you shocked. say work on the drain line, what do you mean? The filters are easy. I think everybody F flushing the drain line, that. doing the water with flushing through the drain line, trying to do that as much as they can. Should somebody um, be doing that every month as well when you change the? I'd filters? say every two to three months yep. uh, around that ballpark. That should be safe. I mean, and if if you're having your regular maintenance done every six months, you, you shouldn't have to do it, but still wouldn't hurt to do it. So it's the regular maintenance, what does that cost to do? And do you guys have plans or somebody? They can stay on it you just schedule them every six months correct yeah um, we have a maintenance contract for the year which includes that twice a year visit um, that runs us $149 um, for the year um, that comes out basically equates to about 75 bucks for a visit um, also gives a discount on repairs um, does the same thing like I talked about checking all the refrigerant the electrical um, what is it if they don't have a contract with you guys um, I mean then you can more? run specials Paul there you go you can you speak go. about <laughs> some of our wintertime specials here yeah well it really depends on you know what kind of specials we have uh, sometimes we'll do like a, a promo we'll, we'll get it down to 49.95 do we have one of those right now for our listeners uh, we do, actually. Okay. We're, run, we're running into the into the fall conversion here. So forty nine dollar so. inspection checkup. It's a PMA maintenance. PMA we is what you call it. We just tune up. We just go in there, look at look at everything, make sure it's operating. All right. So for forty nine bucks, it's a really good time to get your AC checked out. Yeah. Call or text AC to eight one three three seven seven twenty seven seventy five. 813-377-2775 and uh, we'll get your AC checked out, maintained and get you on a plan to make sure it doesn't cost you more money later. Yeah, we really have to be uh, on, on the lookout and prepare for that one week of, of winter that we get. So, Well, it still baffles me in Florida why they don't, they, Florida doesn't care if you have AC or not. But they care about the heat side. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's, 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 <laughs> it's an FHA those. thing. Yeah. It, it, so it's nationwide. It's an FHA because we have to abide by HUD Handbook 4000.1, minimum property standards. You must have heat in Florida. Yep. So uh, one of our listeners is um, asking, because uh, they're watching the live stream on Facebook, we were talking about flushing out the drain line yeah. with vinegar or bleach. Okay. And you said just hot water will work. And he was saying basically it didn't work for them on their system. Okay. And can they rerun the drain line? Uh, most homes, yes, you can rerun a drain line, depending upon where the location is of the unit. Um, if not, they, they have this marvelous thing called a condensate pump that will allow me to basically put it wherever I want for a drain line, um, and then it pumps the water outside. Um, most homeowners, if they have a wet-dry shop back, they can go outside, hook up to the outside, clean out the drain line, but they do need to reprime the trap, which is just flushing water back down the drain. After that is done. all, like all the stuff you're saying is so Greek to me. I would have no idea how to do any of this stuff. So more science. And it's a matter. The trap is the little U. Yep. I get you, that. You I want to make sure is. there's water in the U because what ends up happening is you want to keep methane from backdrafting into your house. So the water actually collects it. I just don't know how to do it. So we're going to have to like video you guys when you're doing That's it in a property sure. or something, then we'll mm -hmm. post it. Fair enough. Right? That makes sense. Yeah. You sound like you've been doing this for at least five minutes. Uh, so. A few years, maybe. Mm. <laughs> Trini, you have a 19-year-old. She can use YouTubes. <laughs> exactly. I'm Speaking sure. Speaking of YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe online. You're watching the video here on Tampa Home Talk. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so every week when we post our videos, get twice a, a week, you get them. Right in your mailbox. And let us know what you think. If you got a suggestion for a future show, if it was entertaining to you, if we should have talked more or less about something, let us know. We'll take your feedback, good or bad. We don't care, but thanks for watching. And just, uh, I was just thinking we have a comment, a question about the pump, condensate pumps, are they loud? I actually have one, and I like to hear it once an hour going off. It's not very loud, but it's when I don't hear it, I start to panic. <laughs> so it lasts about maybe one to two seconds. It sounds like it's a motor ramping up, ramping down. 
Uh, it's, it's not loud. You, I can hear it in the next room over, but with the bedroom door closed, I couldn't hear it. All right. Well, we do have some more questions, so just hold on to this thought. We're going to answer when we come back right after the break. And we're almost out of time. Can you believe it? Like two hours has flown by. Wow. All right. This is Katrina Madewell. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. Stick around. We'll give out our author number in just a moment right after the break. And a message from Tampa Home Talk to everyone out there. PSA. PSA, public service announcement. Do not use vinegar and bleach and at the same time. And. Or, yeah, do not use vinegar and bleach at the same time. Why? Protect what matters most, your family. We don't want anyone dying of, like, chlorine gas. So do not put vinegar and bleach in your system one at or the, the other same time. you can rotate i just say use one or the other pick permanently one. i wouldn't rotate i wouldn't want it confused just pick one just pick one and run with it i my fan a very big fan of bleach uh there's a lot of things out there about the joys of vinegar but uh bleach is where it's at with me i guess that's a preference right Yes. And you like how I have that nice, calming, public service announcement voice? I know, right? <laughs> so what's the difference between the traditional AC filter and inverter system? Ooh, that's a Do good you get topic. That? Yeah, I don't even know yeah. what, it, what is so, an inverter system. Okay, so let's let's start on inverter system. Well, let's start actually with the traditional air conditioner. A traditional air conditioner goes from basically zero to one hundred. When you that thermostat comes on, it's going to tell that air conditioner to come on. It's going to come at max potential power, hundred percent. You're going to get everything at once. So. Uh, kind of think of like a pie chart. It's going to, uh, like a chart, it's going to go up. It's going to run for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, however much it needs to cool the area. Then it's going to go off for, you know, 10 to 15 to 20 minutes. Then it's going to come back on. So it goes up, down, up, down. You know, you're creating kind of the zigzag going back and forth. Now, an inverter system, the way it's designed is, um, it actually will, as a 64 point, or at least our Linux do, have a 64 point variable speed compressor. What that means is it can range all the way up from max 100% all the way down to about 10% capacity. So it can, it can literally fluctuate itself in between there. And based upon the humidity levels inside the house, it's going to try and remove humidity out, which means that it's going to stay more of an even keel power consumption. So its ideal range when you have an inverter is it doesn't want to live at 100%. It wants to live at that 30 to 60 percent range so your power consumption goes down which means your electric bill is going to go even really really down um are they more expensive by far yes okay like <laughs> double more expensive uh traditionally yes i mean you're, you're going to pay quite a bit of chunk of change for a good inverter system um obviously you don't want i mean there, there are different brands out there different options uh, install being the install manager install does make a difference on how you're installing these systems making sure you're cleaning the refrigerant lines properly making sure you have adequate adequate duct work and the location that we can fit the the, the system into the area um, that's the biggest thing because energy efficiency goes up with the inverters back again to that sear thing mm -hmm. um, it goes anywhere between our inverter series starts at 20 sear and goes up um, so size of the equipment gets a lot bigger so we have to accommodate for the space and make sure we have the room for it so sometimes some homeowners just don't have the space for it and as much as i wish i could make it happen you know there's only so much you can fit one of the questions we got is why why is there hot and cold spots inside the house and i know even thinking about my own home there's one room in the very back of the house that's always hotter than everywhere else and it's always colder than everywhere else in the winter why yeah, is that? That has to do a little bit with duct design. Maybe, Dennis, you can help me out a little bit on that because on new construction, they have to do um, certain guidelines that they fit with returns in each room, you know, supplies, and then sizing units based upon what we call a heat load calculation. So we can literally do a heat load calculation on individual rooms and then make sure that you have proper attic insulation and that you're getting the right amount of CFM or airflow into that room going in and coming out. How do you fix that if one room's well, hotter? There, there are a lot of reasons that, that it can happen. It can happen if that room's on the south side of the of, of the of the house because of the, the sun hitting the walls out there. Uh, one of the things that we find a lot of is um, when you've got a room, it, whether it's isolated or not, your thermostat is out in a common area most of the time. And it, that room, uh, once it gets to temperature, it shuts off, but you've got bigger area with cooler air in it, but that room's not getting a supply because it's not calling for it at the thermostat. So sometimes that room, combination of what Thomas said with the attic insulation, whether it's on the side that's, that's getting sun hitting it, um, you're not getting any airflow in there. So if you shut that door, there's nothing going on in there if you don't have a ceiling fan or something moving around the air. 
So in some cases, you would want to add like a return in that room, some some fixes that you could mm-hmm. do if you have a hot or cold spot in the house. One, we'd have to look at the duct design to make sure that everything's getting the proper sizing going to that room. Um, number two would be um, if it doesn't have a return in the room where you change a filter out. Uh, a re- you've got to be able to pull the, the hot air out of the room as the same as much as you do it. If you ever noticed, if you go into a house and a homeowner says, well, you know, my bedroom gets really hot at night. Well, the first question we usually ask, do you close your door? And if they don't have returns in the room and they close their door, there's your example. That's what's so going on. So you would on. add a return and that could fix Correct. it. Correct. Yep. Typically, adding a return in a, into it wouldn't make sense. You'd think putting more cold in there, but the way it works is you add a return in there and it'll remove the hot air. So I've got a vacant house question, right? We get okay. this a lot. What happens, especially with as hot as it is and as humid as it is here in our climate, um, if you turn the system off? Right, we see that a lot of people turn it off. I walked in a house the other day and it was 94 degrees because mm-hmm. no one's occupying the home. They just flat out turn the system off, and I'm like, "Good God, is this thing gonna break when I turn it on or what?" It was so hot and it took forever to cool the place down. Correct. 94 degrees. At, at one point, doesn't mold start setting in at a certain temperature? Well, uh, that we don't actually do the bacteria. I mean, we call it bacterial growth because obviously we don't test for the mold or anything like that. Um, however. Recommended is anywhere between 80 to 85 degrees, keeping the air conditioner on, keeping it running because it's like with a car. If you let a car sit and park it and don't run it for, you know, six, eight months and then try to go start that car up, car doesn't usually like you too much at the beginning. Um, and same thing goes for our air conditioners. They like to be a moving part and they like to keep moving, keep the air circulating in the house and can prevent some of that bacterial growth from forming inside so the So you should set it at least on 85, right? Yeah, at least think. 85. I mean, somewhere Leo, around. any thoughts on when that mold actually sets in a home? At what temperature you should set it out? A vacant, vacant home? Vacant home? What temperature should you not go above? I generally try not to go above 82. That's why I always thought it was 82. 82. Yeah. 82 yeah. was kind of like the magic number I always heard. That's why I wanted to know. Great analogy here in Florida. Anybody's owned a boat, the worst thing you can do if you own a boat is to let it sit. Things happen when it's just sitting. So yeah. you, you need to it's have anything. that unit going. Even parts going. of your home. We yeah, get absolutely. empty nesters that, you know, half of the, half of, half or 75 percent right of their family have moved out and it's just one or two people left in this big home and they have toilets they haven't flushed in a long time and just Mm -hmm. areas of the house not being used what happens over time leo when you're not using those spaces i mean it's just the house wants to be used things break down i mean there was a great series on netflix that actually showed you like when people disappeared what happens to things to buildings to systems to to communities uh, what the animal life does and everything gets taken over in salad but things want to be run i mean the best way to have an ac system last for 20 years is to run it on a regular continual basis over the course of the 20 years in service and maintain it well it's like our bodies right we have to move them or they kind of break you brought it up another huge point um just because empty nest or you've got a big house don't shut off returns don't shut yeah, off yeah, don't close the, or that, anything that issue, because you don't use it yeah that's, that point. really is i really actually bad. see that all the time they'll close the vents and the vents will condense it so they'll be dripping water in yep. in rooms in it and they don't even know about it because they well, don't go into those rooms i wanted to talk about smart thermostats but we're out of time oh, no. we're gonna have to have you guys back another day yeah. Yeah. thanks so much Wonderful. for coming you guys have been great thanks guests paul glad to have you back here on tampa home talk Hi. Um, and again we have mario's air conditioning and heating remember love where you live we're gonna fix it Welcome home. We'll be back next week.